Rails 2.3.4 was released a while back. It's mostly security fixes and bug fixes, but there are a couple nice additions as well. The one in particular I'm excited about to talk to you today in this episode is on seeding your database. So now if you generate a new application under this version of Rails and open it up and take a look at the DB directory, you'll notice there's now a seeds.rb script which is the conventional place now to load some initial data for your application. For now, let's just print a little string here so you can see it in action. Now to run that seed script, you just call rake db seed, and there you go, that'll start up your Rails environment and then run that seeds.rb script, which just print out that one line of string. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what's the big deal about this feature? It's just a simple rake task which just runs a Ruby file. It doesn't really do anything better than that. It's just a stupidly simple feature that was added. And it is. It's just a stupid, simple feature. But I think the thing I'm most excited about is there's now a conventional, dedicated place to put seed data, which you can rely on existing Rails applications from now on to follow. For example, let's say my application has a model called uh, operating system. It just has a name column. And it might work this way where a user chooses which operating system they're running when they register on the site, for example. And the problem is, where do we generate the initial list of operating systems? This isn't something the user generates, so we'll need to provide some initial data for our application in order to get it fully functional. One place I've seen developers add seed data is inside of the migrations file. So when the operating systems table is created, they might create uh, some records in here as well. But I'm not really a fan of this approach. Uh, I've just, I prefer to keep migrations just uh, focused on altering the database schema. But now we no longer have to resort to this technique we now have a dedicated seeds.rb file where we can generate the records here. So it might look like this. Uh, we might have Windows, Linux, and Mac OS X. For each of these. Uh, and then let's run operating system dot find or create by name. And then just pass a name in there. So this way, since we're using find or create by name, it will only create that operating system if it doesn't already exist, which uh, is really good. So if we're running this seed script multiple times on the same database, it won't be creating a bunch of operating systems. Another good candidate for seed data is country. So let's generate a model called country and it has a name and a code string. So I found on the net this list of country names with along with their code and it's in plain text. So this is a nice one to use to just pull the data for our country's database table. Now I already have this code written up, so to save us some time, I'm going to just paste it into here. And what this does is it first deletes all existing countries so that if we do run this multiple times, it'll just start off with a fresh uh, database table. And then uh, it fetches the contents of that file from the web and then loops through each line and then just fetches the country's code and name from each line and then creates a new country record with that content. Really simple script, but it's a nice way to just populate all the countries. But one thing I almost forgot, I need to uh, load up open URI in here because uh, it's not included in Rails environment. So now let's try out our seed script. First we'll run db migrate because I didn't create those tables yet. And then we'll just run rake db seed and that will run that seed script. So it'll just take a couple seconds, but it'll populate our database. And we can check this by running script console and then checking our operating systems. That's all full. And then countries. And there's our populated list of countries. Pretty cool. I'll finish this episode up with one last tip. And that is, let's say in your test directory, you already have some fixtures which happen to have the exact seed data you want to load it in your application. Well, couldn't you just load it from here? Well, you can. Uh, so let's say here, for example, I have the operating systems YAML file and I just want to load this into my seed script. 
To do this, we just need to load the Active Record Fixtures module. And then we just call fixtures.createFixtures. And the first argument here is the path to the fixtures uh, directory. So in this case, it's Rails root, uh, test, and then fixtures. And then the file we want to load, which is operating systems. And then when we run rake db seed, it'll load the fixtures in from the operating systems YAML file. And then we can check that out with script console. And we can see right here that the operating system includes the fixtures version. Now, be careful here because notice the ID numbers are pretty wonky. This is uh, just a fixtures way of dealing with them if you don't specify them manually there in the fixtures YAML file. So just be aware of that if you are loading data from the fixtures files. Now there's some controversy over what exactly is considered seed data. I like to think of seed data as just the minim, uh, minimum amount of records needed to get your application fully functional. Now some like to add user records and other user generated content into the seed script. I prefer not to do this. Instead I like to create a separate rake task. I gave an example of this in episode 126 where I populated a database with a bunch of user data. This is really great so if you're trying to uh, check performance, do any kind of performance analysis, or just simulate what it looks like for your application to have a bunch of users on it. Now while we're on the topic of seeds, you might want to check out the seed foo library, which is another way to generate a seed data. As you can see here, it provides a nice DSL for doing so. It also provides the similar named db seed rake task, so it, I think it'll override the one created in Rails 2.3.4. So this is also a nice solution if you're looking for to generate seed data, but you aren't using the latest version of Rails. But it does provide some additional functionality. Uh, you might also want to check out the Bootstrapper library, uh, which is also uh, similar in nature. And both of these I'll link to in the show notes if you want to check them out. But they aren't really necessary in Rails 2.3.4 if you're just wanting to generate some simple seed data. So that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. This episode is sponsored in part by Pragmatic Screencasts. They offer high-quality screencasts on a variety of subjects, including Ruby and Rails. Check them out at pragmatic.tv. Also sponsored by Clutterpad, an awesome online project management and collaboration tool. Sign up now and get a chance to use it at clutterpad.com.